Welcome to the next segment in our Day in the Life series. In this series, we are covering the details of how to be a successful SolidWorks PDM administrator. Today, we're going to cover the bill materials column sets in SolidWorks PDM. These column sets will drive the information displayed on the bill materials tab within the PDM client. First, let's take a look at the bill materials tab from our vault view. I'm going to go ahead and select an assembly and show the bill materials information about this file. The information is given to us in a simple to use column set that is controlled by the PDM administrator. There are many options on this bill materials tab that allows us to find relevant bill materials information quickly. We can look at the bill materials info tied to previous revisions and versions. Show bill materials based on the SOLIDWORKS configuration. Or the bill materials embedded in a drawing. We can compare bill of materials as well as save information out to a CSV file where we can open it directly in Excel. Admins can modify existing bill of material column sets as well as create new column sets from scratch. They control what information is displayed in the column set as well as who can see it. In this video, we will create a new column set for our purchasing group. They have requested to see specific information when they visit the Bill of Materials tab. This information is different than our current column set that our engineers use on a daily basis. They also have different names for our PDM variables. For instance, they would like to have eng description listed as the header for our description variable. We're going to keep this in mind as we set up our headers to use logical names for the Bill of Materials column set. This should make life easier for the end users. To create or modify Bill of Materials column sets, we'll head to the Administration tool and log in as an administrator or someone who holds the Can Update Columns administrator permission. After we log in, we'll head to the Bill of Materials module. From here, we can right click and select New Bill of Materials. This Bill of Material Builder pops up, and we can notice that it looks very similar to our column builder from a previous video. Since we are using this Bill of Materials for our purchasing group, I'm going to go ahead and make my name reflect that. In the Type selection, I'll ensure that it's set to Bill of Materials. I also have options to create Weldment Cutlass and Weldment BOMs. To start adding columns, I'm going to hit this New Column button and then select the variable that I'd like to use. In this case, I'm going to find description. Like I mentioned before, the purchasing department asked to have eng description listed as the header, so I go ahead and type in a logical name here. We can change how the text is aligned. Um, in this case, I'm going to stick with the left alignment. Uh, if I was maybe using quantity or a number, I might use the center alignment. We have two ways of setting the default width of our column. We can call it out in a numerical value here, or we can manually change the size of the column up here in this preview window. As I manually move this bar at the top, the value down here updates. I'm going to go ahead and add another column for quantity. For this column, I would like to use a special value of reference count. You can tell this is not a regular variable because it is surrounded by carrots. I'll go ahead and change the header to QTY, uh, which is going to represent quantity for our purchasing group. I'm going to change the alignment to center and make the default width about 50. So here at the bottom, the following options instruct the Bill of Materials column set on how to retrieve non-system variable values. The options listed are self-explanatory. Um, if you want deeper information about these options, please check out the online help for additional information. In this case, I'm going to keep it as look for variable and reference configuration and, if it's empty, in the custom properties. Next, I'm going to go ahead and build out my required columns to finish up. I'm going to go ahead and then rearrange them um, in the order that purchasing has requested.
And finally, we need to set permissions for who can utilize this column set. In our case, we need to ensure that the purchasing group can see the bill material, as well as administrators can see and activate the bill material. Once we're finished with this, we can hit OK. Now you can see that we have another column set added to our bill of materials list. Now when I'm logged in as someone from one of the two groups that we selected, I can see the additional bill of material column set from the drop down here. When I select it, I can see the column sets just like we set it up in the admin tool. So now the purchasing department can utilize the information just as they requested.